Welcome, everybody, to the Old Gold Show with you as always. I'm co-manager over at HammerAndRails.com, Andrew Ledman. And I'm Casey. Look what happens when the fans get to come to the game. Bartley, Rivals Network, Boiler Upload. And we're coming to you just a few hours after Purdue's victory in the round of 32 against the Utah State Aggies. Final score, an astounding 106 to 67. Purdue, a 39 point victory over the Aggies. And I mean, just incredible from just about the jump. Um, you know, it stayed close for a few minutes there, but my goodness, when, when Purdue took control, they took control. Purdue scored 57 points in the second half. Zach Eady and Braden Smith were on the bench with eight minutes to play. It, I, it's just crazy. I mean, you you never would have convinced me that that was how this was going to play out. And every starter was out before the four-minute mark in the second half. It Just absolutely crazy. This played out like Sanford came to town again. <laughs> played out <laughs> like Georgia Southern season. was in the arena. This played out like like Florida Atlantic in the wintertime. It's a round 32 of the NCAA tournament, Levin. Wait, wait, it yelled at when you assume that Hold someone's going to win like this. Hold on, I can't hear you. Solid. Solid. Let's try it. Can you talk now? No. Keep Can you hear me? Okay, there. Yes. I have no idea what you just said. So we just start over. I think. What the fuck? It's doing it. They're... What's happening? Is it hooking it up? It keeps to your kicking phone? my AirPods off and then it's coming out of the speakers instead. Mm -hmm. mm. I wonder if it's because I keep getting text messages. Mm. Turn that shit on silent like a professional. Yeah. All right. Keep talking just to make sure. Darius Brown, Great Ozabar, Ian okay. Martinez, Mason right. Falslev, Isaac right, you want me Johnson. To... Now you can shut up. Do you want me to just start all the way over? Josh Aduje. Yes. Okay. Roll your eyes like I'm the problem. I know. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. I'm Taylor Swift here. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the old gold show with his always. I'm co-manager over HammerAndRails.com, Andrew Ledman. And I'm Casey. Let's do the intro again, Bartley. Boiler upload. That's right. Hey, network. Sometimes when you do something twice, it works even better the second time. We'll see if this ha this counts for us today. Purdue victorious in round two of the NCAA tournament, one oh six to sixty seven over the Utah State Aggies, heading to the Sweet Sixteen. And I mean, this one was about as perfect a game as you can think of for Purdue. I mean, everything went right for the Boilermakers from nearly start to finish. Just incredible. Purdue scored 57 points in the second half. And yeah. Braden Smith and Zach Eady went to the bench with eight minutes remaining. Braden Smith played 22 minutes, scored four points. No, five points. Had four rebounds, six assists, three turnovers. Purdue scored 106 points, Ledman. They treated these ever guys... Scored they treated these guys... Game. Like Florida Atlantic in the winter, Ledman. <laughs> Florida Atlantic in the winter, like they they treated them like Utah State came to Mackey Arena with ice on the road. Yeah, Matt we Painter is enough. yelling about how good teams are in the round of thirty two, and Purdue treated them like Florida Atlantic. It, I mean, shout out to the Rattlers. <laughs> you couldn't have drawn this game up any better for Purdue. Uh, oh, you you get Braden, well, like, you get Braden, Braden Smith. Smith don't rest. get in foul trouble. Braden well, Smith, sure. don't, don't break your shoe, Braden Smith. He oh, says, is that what happened? He's Zion to shoe. He said I he has done that, that five to six times when he went out with like, he went out with 18 minutes left in the second half. Two minutes in, went out. So yeah. He blew through a shoe, Ledman. He blew through a shoe like a car tire in winter in December, like Florida Atlantic was coming to Mackey. Man, you're really going after Florida Atlantic. Like Florida Atlantic coming to Mackey. Yeah, I mean, Blown 22 tired. minutes, 22 minutes for Smith, 27 minutes for Edie. I, that's the dream right there. You get under 30 minutes for those guys, and you win by 39 points. I, 
I don't think you could have scripted it much better than that. Everybody came out healthy, no injury problems, no nothing, no moments of fear, no moments of like, oh my God, we might lose this game. Just absolutely incredible from start to finish for Purdue. Purdue was bad for the first five. I don't know about bad. Their defense didn't look great. And they they weren't shooting the ball very well. Okay, they weren't, very good on, they weren't very good on defense, and they weren't very good on offense. But okay, fine. But they fine. played great. Their energy, awesome. Loved it. The missed free throws, loved it. Good way to yes. start. Yeah. Uh, I hey, mean, they, Trey Kaufman and Wren played great for the you know the first few minutes there. And most the of the game. Like, but... he, like, he carried the team with two and one putbacks on rebounds. Yeah. Um, Scored our I'm first starting eight to points. Think, let me, I'm starting to think that... It's first for time all, for everything. All these, all these questionable decisions. Like Miles Colvin, all of a sudden he looks great, like he's doing well in the NCAA tournament. Trey Kaufman Wren, he looks like a problem next to Zach Eady. Let me, I'm starting to think that Matt Painter might know what he's doing. I think you might be right. And you had you had a great post on Twitter about the Miles Colvin great thing. Tweet I don't, yeah, number one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember the exact wording of it, but. If you do, feel free to jump in, but I'll paraphrase it. It's It was something along the lines of, to the people criticizing Matt Painter, when you see Miles Colvin play well, you're not understanding that development happens throughout the season. He's obviously a better player today than he was you know, at the beginning of the year, even of the basketball season, even at the beginning of the calendar year. And that's on Matt Painter and his staff getting him to where he needs to be. It's not a failing of Matt Painter that he wasn't playing earlier. It's a testament to Matt Painter and staff that he's playing now. Correct. And of and to Miles Colvin. Like putting yeah, in the work. Yeah, of course. Of Something course. That, that I've said on this show that you know I've re- re- reiterated, I've I have i like written about this year. Miles Colvin has been there from day one. What he wasn't there day one. That was part of the problem. He wasn't there early right. in the summer because he was on Team USA. Also Probably part of why he wasn't ready right away because he wasn't there the whole time. True yeah. freshman. Like he needed time. And I know it's tough because like players, um, I don't know if you know this, but when they're on the floor and the cameras are on and the games are playing, it's the only time they're allowed, the NCAA, it's the only time they're allowed to touch basketballs. <laughs> so you know, you know, I really, if, I, you I thought play. you were going somewhere with this, and I was like, I "Is going he going to tell me something I don't know?" I'm going somewhere. Like it's okay. the middle of December, and we got a game against Florida Atlantic in Mackey Arena. Ice on the road. Ice on the road, Ledman. It's danger everywhere. Dangerous. Dangerous. It's. It's just like. I look, I don't want I'm not gonna go as far as Matt Painter. I don't know if we need like sports eugenics, which is what he asked for. Um in case anyone no. was curious, Matt Painter asked for sports no, eugenics. I gotta stop you. For those that have not seen the post game press conference, somebody asked him, uh, you know, what do you say to the guys who who go on Twitter or who go online and say, Zach Eady's just tall? And Matt Painter basically, in so many words, said, you shouldn't cover basketball if you truly believe that. And there should be a test if you're allowed to voice your opinion about something. Now, to be clear, you are allowed to cover basketball if you do acknowledge that he is tall. Like, it's okay to say (laughs) he's tall. Just tall is the problem. Is the problem, yeah. 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 Okay to recognize 7'4 tall. 7'4 tall. That's okay. Yeah. You're not allowed to just it. Correct. No just I'm just saying I don't I don't know that I throw out the word eugenics in in any context uh, with a basketball podcast. So, yeah, I, I think the way that Miles Colvin and Camden Heidi as well, um, but I think it's been way more apparent with Miles Colvin these last uh, you know four or five games how much he has improved and how much again that is a testament to the coaching staff and to Miles Colvin himself because you know we talked about it in the last episode. Colvin had what eight or nine did not play coaches' decisions. Eight, eight, eight. since the start of January. Yeah, and so it, it's it would have been so easy to hang eight your head. times since the roads got icy in Florida Atlantic came to Mackey Arena. Miles Colvin was chosen not to play. Yes, like like the tribe got around. We wrote names on papers, and Colvin's name was not there. And we and we snuffed out his. Torch. Wasn't voted. Wasn't yeah. voted on. Technically, he would have been voted on 
to not play. If you're doing Survivor, you got to be consistent because they write your name and then you get voted out. Mm. So you it, it, for him not to play his name. So it's a faulty metaphor from the start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I, I knew where you were. I knew where your head was, and that's the important thing. You know so, what? They should do a Survivor um, in the middle of December in the ice in Mackey Arena. People, I tried. You should. <laughs> I try to keep this podcast on track. I really do. It doesn't always work. So, but like the not, roads in December near Maggie Arena, we are off the rails. And I think this is a good time. We'll take a break. <laughs> we'll come back and we'll talk about how everything just absolutely clicked for this Purdue team against the Utah State Aggies. The best month of the year is here which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 all through the NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not that bet is. Hits. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money. This is how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. And you get up to $1,500 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly, we do have some fun stuff coming for the conference tournaments and especially for the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and what i love the most a nice parlay boost for anything you could possibly imagine betting on in the ncaa tournament from odds and getting an at-large bid to final four futures to the highest seed to make to the sweet 16 i'm calling it right now bet mgm is the king of the prop bet for your march madness needs so go download the bet mgm app use the code field and sign up today and while i've got you a quick request the best way to support the field of 68 and our content you get for free is to engage with us rate and review the pod like and share the youtube videos tell your friends about us it helps in a world where the algorithm is king and now back to the show and we're back so in this one you know, Braden Smith gets two fouls early-ish in the second in the first half. Goes mm-hmm. to the bench. Were, did you have any concern in that moment that like this is the time that Utah State can kind of come back? We need him on the floor. I wonder how long Painter's going to sit him. Yes, because I mean it's silly not to. Because like, yeah, Smith is the key cop. Here's what's happening, which is uh, it, it's funny because like it doesn't make any sense because. If you were to build Braden Smith in a basketball lab and then make the opposite, you would build Miles Colvin. But I, I, I'm going to need more of that. But Miles Colvin is the substitute for Braden Smith to keep the offense running. Miles Colvin is super athletic, long, shoot first. Okay. Braden Smith is I, the opposite yeah. of all those things. That is true. But he, he fills the void in a way we saw it kind of with the Big Ten tournament. Um, when Braden Smith went down with the injury and the offense like sputtered to start, it was Miles Colvin that came in and got the offense looking right just because he is such a threat. He moves in a certain way. He's long. He fills space and he makes the perimeter dangerous enough to let other guys get into action. And it's been like it's the first cure that Matt Painter has found for Smith being on the bench that's worked. And it, it's it's interesting because like, it's not, they don't fill the same role at all. Right. But it, it covers up the things like you don't need quite as much playmaking around when you add someone like miles Colvin, because he is so dangerous because he moves. His defense has been really good. Yeah. The last few games, it was really good against Ian Martinez. Martinez. Yeah. Struggled. And the biggest thing with that thing, um, Smith was telling me like eight out of 10 of those plays after he went out, Purdue got to stop on defense. And if yeah. Purdue gets a stop on defense, they get going on offense. That's just, it's how it works. It's what it's like to have Edie. But, but I do think just like having Miles out there, just his creativity, his ability to be a threat on all three levels occupies space, not in a similar way as Smith, but the effects of it are similar for Purdue's offense. Yeah, I think. 
that's a really astute point, I would say, because they Did are such <laughs> they are such different players, mm -hmm. but it is true that you can sub them in for each other and they they play different roles and it makes the offense look different and it looking the offense looking different isn't a bad thing it doesn't mm -hmm. slow the offense down it doesn't you know throw a a wrench in the offense it just works differently and i think that that can be a real shock to your de the defense you know you're you're taking out your steady all american honorable mention point guard and putting in a guy like miles colvin who is incredibly athletic incredibly fast long he's big he's he so big lot. yeah well and it's it, it, when you switch from smith to him i mean i'm sure it's even more apparent um his size but it 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 gives painter another gear for this offense that really i mean took complete advantage of everything on offense today you know as we said 106 points trey kaufman ran his best game as a boilermaker he was really good when Florida Atlantic came to Purdue and Mackey last year. Oh, I think that was the game, Ledman. I think oh it was God. the game where Edie was sick. I don't even... Ledman. I I can't. I, I it was meant to be. I don't know what to tell you. Like he, he was really good that game. He scored like okay. 22 points. But this game obviously more significant. Florida A and M. I lied. It's Florida A and M, which might stand for Atlantic. I don't think so. Trey Kaufman Agriculture had, and something or other. Trey Kaufman Ren had 11 points that game. It's, it's not the game I'm thinking of. I'm thinking he, of had a game early, he had a game earlier this year where he yeah. scored like 20. But yes, but. it was Trey's best game. Like He was dominant in an NCAA tournament, and he was a problem. He kept him going early. Uh, Lance Jones on defense was so much better than he was against yes. uh, Grambling State. Grambling like, State. That, that was something like... He told everyone in the locker room afterwards, like, I wasn't good. I was bad on defense. And he's been kind of bad on defense a lot more this year than his reputation would say. Yeah. Um, and especially in the last month or so, it's been a real struggle for him. Yeah. So, like, he was locked in. He was really good. He made, like, he made uh, Darius Brown's life very hard. Darius Brown had 12 points. Most of those were late when the game was over. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you can get that kind of dedication from Jones, um, he did pretty good on offense. I, I Fletcher lawyer was brilliant. Um, yeah. 15 point six assists. If you're talking what makes it work without Smith, bring Colvin in allows lawyer to play in sma space. Talking about what Colvin occupies. It's, it's pretty much, you can't help off lawyer and that space is going to exist for him to do good things. Um, he was aggressive, uh, got to the mid range, got to the rim, um, found shooters just this was an all-around game for purdue uh in a way that probably haven't seen a ton this year um because you could argue like camden heidi had one of his best games uh mason gillis got two threes late uh yeah I think and he that's... needed those he needed those i asked him that exact question and like that's always a like touchy thing it, to say because he's yeah. like i don't think i needed it but like it's good to see him go in and like yeah we've seen mason gillis like if once he gets one to drop, like he immediately took another one. And part of that yeah. was you see one go and like as a shooter, like that's it's, it's green light when you see it, when you see it yeah. get through. Um, but like, you just, you, you don't have a dud anywhere in the lineup. No, everyone did what they needed to do. And Purdue is like, talk about a solid eight right now, like eight yeah. man rotation. Everyone that comes in has a purpose and makes the team better. Mm-hmm. You're talking about bringing Mason Gillison, one of the best shooters in the country, at four. At the four. 50% three-point shooter. You get to bring that in to go play next to Zach Eady, who needs a double team at all times. Right. And then you're talking about bringing Camden Heidi in, who is 6'7", like 210. An athletic athlete. freak. Athlete. Another then, great dunk today. As an afterthought, two great dunks. Yes. Yeah. The first dunk which I had him grade which dunk he liked more, and he said the first one. He's like, definitely the first one. It got us going more. And, like, the power two-step, to to sky up and grab a rebound with two hands, just, like, have you, has anyone ever felt more testosterone in their body than <laughs> three, just two-hand grab, come down, power hop to two feet, rise up, dunk? It's, I mean... 
It's not a feeling how, I will ever know, yeah, but it must good. it must be great. How like how good must you feel after a play like that? It's and gotta feel pretty Cole, great. And then Miles Coleman comes in with like eight minutes left. Doesn't come in until Smith gets the foul. And like he just knocks down three threes, grabs three rebounds. He wasn't rebounding to start the season. No. No rebound. It, that yeah, ties his, his season high, which he's done back to back games now on rebounds. And like he's playing it, defense. And that again, I mean, to go back to the thing we talked about ad nauseum at the beginning, it shows middle that of he's, December, Mackie nope, Arena. No, nope. oh. it yeah. shows that he's bought in. I mean, I'm not saying mm. he wasn't bought in before, but he understands. I think more now that like to get he's, minutes to to be on the floor, you got to do the other things. You can't just be a scorer. You got to get those rebounds. You got to be in position on defense. And I mean, he he, I can't speak highly enough of the of the ability he's shown as this season has gone on. Um, He's, he's grown so much. Hustle plays are sometimes miscategorized as effort. Sometimes effort isn't about how much you're willing to give or how quick you're moving. It's, do you have to think about what you need to do? Yeah. Do you have to think about where you need to be on a court? Effort comes when you're reacting. And it's not just a physical effort thing. It's, do you know where to be? Do you just do you feel comfortable getting to places? And all of a sudden, the game has slowed down for Miles. Like yeah. Miles knows where to be on a court now. He knows where he can make an impact. He can go get the ball. Like all these things. Like that's a complicated Purdue offense, yeah. and he has had to adjust to it. It's a complicated defense. Like there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of places to be. And now that it's it's not thinking as much anymore, and he's going out and playing. The results are coming, and all of a sudden. Purdue is a dynamite eight team, like yeah. dynamite eight guys. That roster is loaded. There are, as you said, two All Americans on that starting five. You can argue a lot of seasons that you know we only name what fifteen All Americans every season. Yeah, give or there's take. thirty guys that are probably All American worthy. Purdue, Purdue has two of them. Yep, and then now they are starting to have like elite role players around them. Yeah. Everywhere. And there's no, the the drop off has become less and less as the season's carried on. And now you're seeing Purdue drop 100. They didn't score 60 points against Fairleigh Dickinson last year. Yeah, 58, right? 58 points against 363rd ranked defense last year. They just put 106 108 on Utah State. Yeah. It doesn't sound as impressive when you say Utah State, but that's a good no. That was a good yeah. That's a good team. team. They, yeah, that was a Mountain West team. champion. Yeah. yeah, and you know you talk about the going eight deep. I mean, remember it was just a month or so ago, maybe even less, that we were talking about we're not getting anything from the bench. Correct. Uh, we're we're hoping that Gillis can come in and hit a couple threes. Other than that, we weren't really getting anything. And now, granted, I know you know. Everybody played in this game. They cleared the bench, but it's still, I think, important to look. The bench was seven of 13 from three. Big. That's over 50%. Big if true. Yeah. And they were also three for three at the free throw line. Didn't miss one there. So seven of Purdue's 11 threes came from their bench. That's, That's a really great tool to have. And it, it is a complete diametrically opposed uh, to where we were about a month ago, and when when we were concerned about it, yeah, and like Camden Heidi is attacking closeouts now. He's talked to me like a lot of people have told him you're a little too passive out there, and so it's it's a thing. He's trying to be more aggressive when he gets ahead of steam, when he sees the rim. Who's getting in the way, Ledman? Not me. Like a storm in the middle of December, who is getting in the way, Ledman? <sighs> I'm guessing the Florida. Florida, whoever. Florida Atlanta's Buster. not getting in the way. They're getting swallowed up by it. Florida A and M. Are we going with A and M? Who it actually was? Or are you going? We gotta with stick Atlantic? with Atlantic. We gotta stick with Atlantic. Okay. Well, they're coachless now. That's rude. Well, they lost their coach, right? That's rude. Okay. I mean, I that's I. Is it Florida Atlantic? It's Dusty May, right? And then now he's gone. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Off to Michigan, so he'll yeah. be our problem now. Oh, this whole time I've been insulting a tournament team. Yeah, I wondered why you chose Florida Atlantic. Yeah, I was thinking of Florida A and M. I thought the, the whole Rattlers. time I was like the Rattlers. Yeah, but what? A, we'll just let it go. No, and it, it's the least important part of the podcast. 
Also, um, Florida Atlantic lost to Northwestern, who doesn't have two did. of their starters. So, yeah, you know. Florida Atlantic kept Indiana State out of the tourney. So they did. They did. Do they deserve um, our patience I, or I, proper identification? I, I, I think it's it's also wild to point out that Zach Eady had twenty one points in the first half and wound up with twenty three. Yeah, so are we scored- the problem? We go this whole way and haven't mentioned Zach Eady yet. And he, he, yeah, he scored 23 and 14. Just, well, but he only scored two points in the second half, and Purdue expanded their lead. He didn't need well, yeah. to. Right, but it it's it's crazy. And if you'll indulge me just for a minute, there are numerous uh, online popular personas, mm. whether they be through any mm. number of misogynistic white male-centered uh websites who have oh. decided are they named after things you sit on they are who have decided that zach ed and purdue are not fun to watch that they're unwatchable mm. that he again he's just tall and if you know if, if he was anywhere else no one would care and purdue fans are just have lost their minds because this is not watchable basketball mm-hmm. shove it up your ass I, I don't I don't care. Ooh, this is the stupidest. You. This coming is the stupidest argument I've ever heard. The the argument, I guess, comes down to the fact that Purdue plays a center, unlike a lot of, of teams in college basketball. And we, they throw we play him, a, they throw him they the went, ball. Yeah, they and they the and we give him the ball and we play a center dominant basketball. Because, oh, I don't know, we have a guy who's the two-time national player of the year. And suddenly, because he gets fouled, it's unwatchable basketball. I don't know what these guys are doing. I don't know what kind of clicks they're chasing. I don't know what kind of money they're going after. But I hope it's good. And I hope it helps them sleep. Because they're just lying. I'm sure Jägermeister helps them sleep. Fireball? Not a fireball. There's just... I don't mind... If you disagree with and and you say, I don't think this style of basketball can ultimately win them in March. I think they'll need more from their guards. I think they'll need more, whatever. That's mm-hmm. at least a cogent argument that I can engage with. But you just sitting there watching this basketball game where Purdue scores 106 points in the second round of the NCAA tournament and tweeting through it. Oh, this is awful. This is not fun. How many free throws did they watch. shoot? Uh, Purdue shot 23 free throws. I mean, uh, did, Utah uh, State yeah. shot 16. That's 37, right? 31? That accounts I for mean, the lead? 39? <laughs> no. 39 that's not point the difference. difference? No. Yes, no. it had to be. No. It's the only reason Purdue I, wins. Yeah. Uh, so what I want to say to those people mm-hmm. is, again, just shut up. Mm. Just shut up. It's It's old and tired. And you're not clever, you're not smart, you're not making any point that shows you know anything about basketball. You also had an object uh, placement suggestion. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah. And that, you know... Tell them again, they might have forgot. They they can just shove it up their ass. I just, I don't care. Yeah! Yeah! it, it, It really is, like, to go back to what Matt Painter said after the game... It's we've we've become accustomed to just people being talking heads and saying things that are outrageous intentionally. And these are coming from people who know more about basketball than I do. Like in in full disclosure, I mean, I'll I'll just name him now because it's obvious who I'm talking about. It's Mark Titus. And Mm. he, you know, he Mm. played at Ohio State and I use play in quotes and I'm sure he would as well. But he walked on to Ohio State. He helped greatly. Uh, with their, you know, camaraderie in the locker room. I'm sure he was a funny guy. He wrote a book that I read. Um, I really so funny. Here's really the issue: funny. if you work at bar stools, you are contractually <laughs> obligated to steal someone else's stuff. I guess. So Mark Titus just, you know, stole other idiots' stuff, and now he yeah, has Aaron to Aaron Torres. He stole Ooh, Aaron Torres's stuff. Torres. It, it's just like I, I don't know, man. Like you know better than this. You do. You know better than this. You're smarter than this. And the fact that you continue to shill out this absolute bull says to me that you don't really care. You don't. You you are there to get attention and drive 
web results and, and clicks. You're not actually there to discuss basketball. I would prefer to discuss basketball. They don't want to. And that is a shame because we are watching a generational talent who is guiding his team back from last year's absolutely, you know, rock bottom for the program, losing to a 16 seed. And, you and know he great? is he's carrying them back. And these people pretend like it doesn't matter and it doesn't care because he's tall. And it is absolutely just just I it there is nothing more infuriating in college basketball, Twitter and talk than this. And now we get to discuss basketball in Detroit on Friday night as Purdue takes on Woo! Gonzaga in the Sweet 16. Also, yeah. shout out Gonzaga. Nine straight Sweet 16s is unbelievable. Yeah. And it's incredible. I mean, <laughs> and the fact that Mark Few has stayed around in at Gonzaga after, I'm sure teams have just pulled up to his office with dump Mark trucks Few, full of money. Mark Mini is what I say. Yeah, that's Mini right. And that's... We have always said that, you know, you, you may call him Mark Few. We call him Mark Mini. Mark so, Mini. Um, and, and I know this has been pointed out numerous times online, but how crazy is it that Purdue's trip to the Final Four and to the championship game could literally be the same three teams they played in Maui in the exact same order? Kansas? No, no. they lost in both. Yes, they, they lost did. in both I, instances. So we, we're going to play Gonzaga in the Sweet 16. We win. We very well could play Tennessee in the Elite Eight. If we win, we very well could play Marquette in the Final Four, which is the exact same three teams in the same order that we played in Hawaii. Are we sure they're not writing this? I I think we might be in a simulation. Okay. Because, I think that's our final thought. Yeah. We, we're, we're in a simulation. And if it is, I hope the script let's hope is Purdue great. wins it all. Yeah, I hope, I hope we get a great. Hollywood ending, and I will watch it when it comes out. <laughs> so for Casey and myself, we'll be back midweek to talk Gonzaga and Sweet 16. Till next time, folks.